I would like to say welcome to everyone who is with us today for the first time and welcome back to those of you who've been there before. Uh, my name is uh, Devorah Morris Coriel, and I have the gift of being the director of the Integrative Medicine Elective Rotation at the Andrew Weil Center. And this uh, program, our monthly platform to share an experience with you directly really came from our elective rotation. And we have mined the rich resource of our um, presenters to share with you what we've learned about doing some of these non-allopathic modalities on Zoom. So, you know, Zoom is our friend in this way because we're able to reach so many more of you each month. So this, this month we have Jamie Vaughn with us and uh, Jamie's been teaching in the rotation actually since we're on Zoom, amazingly sharing craniosacral therapy uh, with our students and now with you uh, online, which everybody said couldn't be done. And here we are welcoming you, Jamie, to share uh, what you've learned and what you've been teaching us for this last um, period of time. So we'll begin with Jamie's session, which will be about five minutes, and then we'll be available for Q&A, uh, which you can put in the chat or raise your hand, and I'll monitor that. And then we've got um, members of our Andrew Weil Center staff available after the Q&A who will stay on and answer any other questions you might have, not directly for Jamie. Uh, and I'll stay on for that as well. So that's kind of the lay of the land and uh, welcome everyone today, but most especially Jamie. Thank you for what you're gonna share with us, Jamie. Well, thank you all for having me. I'm I'm delighted to be here as always. Um, cranial sacral is a passion of mine, so I'm really looking forward to taking you on this journey with me. Um, and if you have a nickel nearby, if you could grab it for me, if you don't already have it nearby, I'll give you a minute to run into the kitchen or wherever it might be, because you're going to want that. Because what we do is we use the weight of a nickel. So we're going to take a moment to try and calibrate our hands and the pressure that we're going to be using in order to find the cranial sacral rhythm. If you don't have a nickel nearby, that's okay. You can get a dime or a quarter. Just know either you're going to be a little bit lighter or a little bit heavier. Okay. So what I would like you to do is I'd like you to take that nickel and I'd like you to place it in the palm of your hand. And just notice, what does it feel like? Is it heavy? Is it cold? Is it warm? Now take the nickel, flip your hand over and place it on the back of your hand. Does it feel the same? Is it heavier? Lighter. Now take your nickel and place it on your thigh. Can you even tell it's there? Now grab your nickel once more. You're going to look up towards the ceiling and you're going to place it on your forehead. And then see what it feels like. Did it become a lot heavier, a lot lighter? Does it feel the same as when it was on your thigh? Then go ahead and take your nickel away. So the weight of our hands is about the same as the nickel. So what I'd like you to do is place the nickel on one thigh. We're going to take our hands and we're going to place one on each thigh trying to calibrate the weight of our hands to be equal to that of the weight of the nickel. 
So anytime that you feel your hands becoming too much pressure, think about the weight of the nickel on the thighs and draw it back out. Since the cranial sacral system is based on fluid, the cerebral spinal fluid emptying and filling back up, we're working with water. So the harder a pressure is, the more difficult it's going to be to feel. So I invite you to bring yourself into a nice, comfortable position. And I want you to close your eyes. And we're going to move in through the body. First, I want you to bring your awareness to your breath. Listen to the inhaling and your exhale. Don't try and change the rhythm. Just allow your body to be what it is. And then we're going to ignore the rhythm of your breathing. We're going to move past it. And we're going to try and find the rhythm of your heart, your circulatory system. Center in there. Just notice the beating of your heart. And then you're going to move that rhythm to the side. And we're going to go deeper. We're going to try and find a filling and an emptying, another rhythm. It's not your respiratory and it's not your circulatory system. If our hands are remained light on our thighs, you might notice that this rhythm as it fills, your legs rotate slightly into external rotation. As the cerebral spinal fluid fills up in the cranial sacral system, and then they might come back towards medial rotation as the system empties. If you're finding it difficult to find the rhythm, it's okay. I want you to picture a rhythm if you're not able to find one. Expanding into an external rotation for three, two, and one, and then back in towards a medial rotation for three, two, and one. Staying with this rhythm of external rotation as the system fills and internal rotation as it empties. If you are able to find the rhythm on your thighs, I want you to follow it and just pay attention to it. Does it feel like it's glitching anywhere? Does one side seem to be filling faster than the other? Is it sluggish? And we're not doing anything. We're simply being and monitoring our system. Now using our paired bones, whether we found the rhythm or not, if we found it, we're gonna follow the rhythm into internal rotation, and then we're gonna create a barrier with our hands. And we're not going to allow for external rotation to happen. You'll feel the system trying to fill and push your hands out. Eventually, it's going to stop. When it stops, you're going to feel a release and it will go further into internal rotation. Once that happens, you're going to leave your hands there, but release the barrier. When the system comes back on, I want you to notice, 
Does it feel fuller into an external rotation? Does it feel more symmetrical? Again, if we're having difficulties finding the rhythm, it's okay. Once your system has come back on into an external rotation and an internal rotation, I want you to remove your hands. And just notice, dive back in through your body. See if anything feels different, more open or more closed. We're gonna start at the tips of our toes and we're gonna scan through the body, through the toes and through the feet, up through the lower legs, past the knees, up through your thighs, into your pelvis, through the abdominal cavity, up through your rib cage, through your arms, up through your neck, and all the way up to the top of your head. Is there anywhere that is drawing your attention back? Any signs of discomfort? Any parts of the body that want some extra attention? Hold that spot in your mind while you move into a comfortable passive position. So if you wanna reposition yourself on the floor, please take this time to do that. If staying seated works for you, then do that as well. I'm gonna invite you to take your hands on that area of the body. So if it's the upper chest, I'm gonna place one hand in front and one hand behind, and I'm gonna relax. Again, trying to gauge with the simple weight of a nickel. We're gonna move back through the systems. Being aware of what's going on underneath my hands, closing my eyes again if I need to, and bringing my attention and my awareness to my breath. Feeling the expanding of the thoracic cavity as I inhale and the relaxation as I exhale. Finding the circulatory system and that rhythm And again, placing it to the side. And if my hands are not on two paired bones, I might find an expansion as the system fills and an emptying as my hands come closer together. And just notice what you're feeling. Some people feel heat releasing from their hands, others it's cold. You might feel swirling underneath your hands and you may feel nothing and that's okay. On the expansion side of whatever you're feeling, I want you to invite the body to try and expand a little bit more. And on a release, allow it to release a little bit more. Stay there for a moment and check in with the weight of your hands. Does it feel equal to a nickel? 
If your hands have become heavy, it's going to be harder to feel. On the next exhale or emptying of the cerebral spinal fluid, I want you to create the same barrier that we did on the paired bones of the thighs. Don't allow the system to expand. Again, we're simply creating a barrier. We're not trying to squeeze anything. And allow for the system to relax completely and to stop pushing against your hands. Take another moment here. And then release the barrier, but leave your hands there. Wait for the system to come back on so you can tell if it's fuller. Is it pushing with more life against your hands? If we're on paired bones, does it feel like it has more of an external rotation or an internal rotation? Does it feel less stuckness? Once your system has come back on, I'd like you to relax your hands down by your sides and just allow your body to be and to feel. We're trying to find the fascial restrictions within the body and using the cranial sacral system to release those restrictions. So again, I want you to go into your mind's eye and take a scan of your body. You can start at the top of the head or at the tips of the toes, anywhere you choose. If your mind starts to wander, try and bring yourself back to your breath. Stay within the body for as long as you can. When you find another area of restriction, place your hands around it. If it's the same place that you were before, that's okay. Feel free to go back there. Recalibrating your hands to the weight of a nickel. If a nickel doesn't work for you, think about holding a newborn baby's head with really light pressure or the wings of a butterfly. Try not to disturb, just simply bringing awareness and trying to see what's happening underneath your hands. Moving through the systems again. As your fingers and your hands become more sensitive, you might feel your lymphatic system. Move through that one first. Find that rhythm right underneath the skin. And then move deeper into your respiratory rhythm.
Facing that one to the side. To the rhythm of our heart. Placing that one to the side. And trying to find again the rhythm of the cranial sacral. Turning on and filling. Pause at the top. And then an emptying as it comes back together. And a pause at the bottom. As the filling and the emptying happens, does it feel like it's not smooth? Does it get stuck anywhere? Is that stuckness pulling on another part of your body? Or is it really localized underneath your hands? And just having awareness. If you feel like the part in between your hands is attached to another part of your body, I invite you to leave one hand where it is and move your other one wherever it happens to be attached. If that means you need to resituate yourself, feel free to do so. Lean forward, lay down. And then bring your awareness in between both hands, regardless of where they are. Allow the fascia in between your hands to start to spread. Invite them to spread. The more spreading that we have, the more room we create for the cerebral spinal fluid and the cranial sacral system to move without restrictions. Always inviting for the body to do what it needs to do. If you so choose, you can follow into an emptying of the cerebral spinal fluid and creating that barrier again. If that does not feel comfortable for you, you can choose just to follow the fascia wherever it might be guiding you. If it feels like your hands are spinning in opposite directions, follow it until it settles. If we follow our hands back in towards that closed space, we create our barrier and we wait for it to stop. If it feels like your hands need to move again, follow your body. If you have a barrier, I want you to release it, leaving your hands again where they are. If you've already moved them, that's okay. We're just going to take a moment for the system to turn back on. When it has, remove your hands down by your side. Allow your eyes to be closed and again, scan your body. Do we feel a release? Do we feel openness? Do we have more awareness? 
not just of inside our body, but what's going on around us. Take another moment or two here. And again, keeping your eyes closed. When you're ready, I want you to bring movement back into your body. You can start by wiggling your fingers and your toes, moving your head and your neck around again. Be gentle. And when you're ready to invite the outside world back in, please feel free to open up your eyes. Thank you. Thank you, Jamie. Um, that was an extraordinary opportunity to experience subtle energy amazingly and yes Wendy um, I was just going to ask you if you would take just a minute or two I don't want to take too much of our questions and answer but if you could just take a moment to share the basic concept of craniosacral therapy I, I understand but you know we're talking about cerebro spinal fluid and as differentiated from the other sort of movements. I, I, I know that in your bio and in the immersive intro, we had some information, but given how much craniosacral is being used now by osteopaths and chiropractors, we teach it to our doctors, right? So if you could give us just a moment or two, that would be really helpful. Of course. So the cranial sacral um, system is the closed system, and it's the cerebral spinal fluid that bathes your brain and goes down the the spinal column. And as we know with the nervous system, it branches out and it goes out into the periphery. So as the system fills, okay, it's actually the cerebral spinal fluid coming in and expanding. The cranial bones, your actual head bones, will move in a set um, direction. And then there's stretch receptors in your brain or in the skull that say, oh, that's gone a little bit too far. And then it will turn off. And then those bones start to come back together. And when they get too close together, another receptor goes, whoop, you're about to hit. So I need you to expand again. And it's felt systemically because we have the nerves that go all the way down and innervate every part of our body. So when we're working with paired bones, it's a lot easier to feel this um, external rotation or internal rotation. Working on your own head with a nickel is really difficult, which is why I choose not to go there. Um, but when we're not on paired bones, that same feeling of when it fills, it's almost like a water balloon trying to fill up. And then it gets to that stretch point where it goes, oh, it's about to burst. And then it will come back down. And then it goes, oh, that's too close. So it needs to go back on. Did that help answer? The question. Um, let, let, I'm going to pay attention to the chat, but um, you know, craniosacral therapy at this point in integrative medicine is really uh, being used more and more by more of the hands-on manual as well as energy uh, systems, and um, there's lots of information online that you can access about it. Again, I think of all of the healing disciplines, probably osteopathic medicine, would you agree, Jamie, is the system that uses it the most comfortably? Actually, I think massage therapy uses it most comfortably because we work a lot with the fascial system and the restrictions in fascia versus the bones. But osteopathy, I, I definitely do think, uses it more within the head. I think massage therapy and hands-on modalities tend to branch out a little bit and use it differently. Right. 
Yeah, it, it's um, so is there a good program where we can learn craniosacral therapy? <sighs> I really like the Upledger Institute. They are based out of Florida, but they travel all over the world. Um, it's a wonderful organization, and you will be in classes with a myriad of different providers. I've been in with speech therapists. I've been in with neuro um, neurologists, massage therapists. It's really a bringing together of um, everything. I will type that. Okay. I was just about to do that. Um, yeah, can you maybe speak for a moment about John Upledger, who actually is credited with developing this system? Uh, John Upledger, sadly, he passed. Um, so did his son, who also took over the organization. He was charged with whether or not there was a cranial sacral system. So he found uh, during an actual operation, because he was an actual doctor, um, holding the the spine, spinal column open during a surgery, and it kept shutting on a rhythm that nobody knew was there. So he kind of spearheaded this, and then he figured out different ways to come in and work with it. So he was known for always treating the person that came in without looking at their medical records, just saying, I know what's wrong with you. And he would place his hands on on individuals and find the restrictions in their own body and work with the body to get it to release, which I think is what he's most known for um, in kind of my realm of people that that I work with. But there are lots of other um, spinoffs of, of his teaching. But if you go to the Upledger Institute, it is really his his way of doing it, and a lot of medically intense books. So thanks, I mean, um, and thank you for the questions that people are putting in. Can you explain? Can what do you mean when you say internal and external rotation? In medicine, most of the time we use it to describe movement of joints. Is it different in craniotomy? sacral uh, sac sacral therapy um uh, yeah it is not so if i'm working with um my lower extremities i'm still going to have that external rotation where my pinky toes go out towards the side to the external side of the body and then the internal rotation with my uh, my big toes coming back towards each other in a knock knee position so it we use the same terminology um, throughout the body that people do in medicine um, you know, one of the things that I think is wonderful today for our session with those of you who are on is to get a taste of, of what it is that we are uh, sharing with our fourth year medical students and residents. So this is such a subtle developing the sensitivity, whether we know what it means, right, intellectually, or we let our hands, uh, we let go of the need to know and sort of feel and be guided by the meditation. This, we're, you know, we've got one session in each rotation that is devoted to craniosacral therapy. Um, Wendy is asking, will you feel the rotation better while lying down? The answer to that is it depends. I feel it better if I'm laying down just because I'm able to relax more and the more relaxed somebody is, I think the easier it is to feel things. Um, but that's not the case for everybody. If somebody had extremely short um, upper extremities, it would be easier for them to find, to feel things if they were seated. So that, that's a difficult one to, to really answer. Is it possible to, thank you, to feel an almost complete blockage of the cerebrospinal fluid? Yes, it is. And the nice thing to know is that the system actually shuts off by itself to reset from time to time. So if you were feeling a complete blockage or you weren't feeling anything at all, it's okay. <laughs> there, I, I know that sounds really bad, um, but it, it is okay because it is a natural occurrence. If you were feeling it on one side and a complete blockage on another side, then that would be where we would be inviting the system. For me, I, I like to explain it as I have a toddler to say, you know, come with me instead of just grabbing them and making them do something. If you reach your hand out and you say, will you come with me? 
eventually the body knows that you're not doing it any harm. I mean, you're, you're one and the same. So it will, if it's given the opportunity and an invitation, you would be amazed at how much it will actually go along with what it is that you're, you're seeking because it's for the betterment of the entire system. The invitation. Yeah. Um, Valentina's asking, you use the whole hand or just the fingertips? It depends on where I am on the body. We know that our fingertips are much more sensitive than the entire hand. So if you need just your fingertips, that's fine. Eventually, you'll find that the the whole hand, if the, the place of the body is appropriate, you would want to place your whole hand just for palpatory. You're getting more sensations on the entirety of your hand. You know, one of the things that I always find whenever I do this exercise with you, Jamie, is um, just calibrating the weight of my hand, that just learning that degree of sensitivity in our touch, is it a nickel? Is it a quarter? I mean, and to hold that lightness of touch, really amazing. How often can we do it on ourselves? Anytime you want. Anytime you want. Hmm. You, you uh, can do it multiple times a day if you really wanted to. However, I probably wouldn't do it multiple times because it will integrate with your system. So it's kind of like messing with your nervous system multiple times during the day. But you can use it also as a meditation. So mm, if yes. you wanted to meditate in the morning and see how your body is feeling and then decide to add cranial sacral to it, that would be fine. Yeah, that's a lovely way to do it. So um, there, here's a question. Does this method reach or affect the abdomen? And I'm just wondering if this person who's asking the question would maybe sort of be more specific, but uh, does it reach the abdomen? It does. It can go into all the visceral organs because the... Um, the fascial system runs throughout the entire body. So if I'm not on paired bones, but let's say I have my hands on my abdomens, what I'm feeling is I'm feeling restriction in the, um, through the fascial system and I'm waiting for a spreading of that fascial system. And if that happens to be within the internal organs, then yes, it will, it will release there as well. Um, now, I know we're going um, way over our Q&A time, uh, and this last question, um, can craniosacral massage be performed on a person with seizure disorder? That actually is a perfect segue. Maybe, Jamie, you could just mention what are the quote-unquote conditions or symptoms that would be most beneficial to this approach to therapy? I, I, I know it's probably not an easy question to answer in 20 seconds, but. It's okay. Um, cranial sacral is one of my favorite because there's really not a whole lot of people that you cannot work on. Depending on the seizure, seizure disorder, you would want to make sure that they're prepared because it may lead to more seizures and it may lead to less because depending on what somebody has going on seizure related, we don't know what the nervous system is going to do with it. The people that I cannot work on are those who have an imbalance in their, their system. So anybody with like swelling of the brain where they just, unless they have a stint that, that takes care of that. If there's an abnormal pressure in the brain um, in all that fluid, we don't we don't work with the cranial sacral system. It's it's too much. Um, but you know, babies, I think the ones that are are born with mal shaped malformed um, cranial bones are this is wonderful for them. I think it's wonderful for anybody. I really do. Um, Jamie, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I know we've gone over, but um, do we have um, your link, a link to you in the immersive, or maybe you'd be willing to put it in because some people, there's a few more questions and maybe if there are people who want to uh, sort of reach out to you, uh, that would you be willing? Yeah, there we go. Yep, there's my email. Um, I know you guys have a set schedule. You can use it on people with migraines, and the more you practice with your hands, the more you're going to be receptive to it. So it's really just practice.